Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Cyberlab and today will be another video about VPN. In this video specifically, we're going to show how you can configure TwinGate and how good this application is for your needs. First of all, let's try to understand what's the difference between both. If you consider WaringGuard OpenVPN, you need to open some specific doors or at least do a port forwarding for it. You need to keep up your IP address in the way that if you restart a router and perhaps it change, you need to keep it updated, otherwise you're gonna lose track or the VPN will not be able to find the correct IP address. Different for TwinGate, you don't need to do it. You don't need to do any extra configuration because they will do everything for you. They will use a zero trust tunnel where they will connect your device external for a network directly for your device inside your network and you can configure everything for allowed some people to have access for specific applications and other things. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show you this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, also to subscribe for the channel and let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to do any installation, let's go to the basics. First thing, you need to have a device where you're going to run this application. In my case, I'm going to run in a Raspberry Pi. You can run anywhere, anything that you want, but um, because this traffic will not be so intense, a Raspberry Pi will work well. Also, you need to have uh, in this Raspberry Pi Linux base. Of course, in my case, I will use the Debian installing a micro SD. And in this system, I need to have Docker installed. Why I want to install on Docker? It's simple. Docker will guarantee that your system is updated. And if you want to remove this application after your installation, it's easy to remove it. If you're running directly in your Linux base, you need to uninstall it. And this could take a little bit longer. So have everything in mind. What we're going to do? We're going to go to the computer and start to go to all the setup process. So let's do it. Now, here in the, here in the website, I will be able to create my account. Because I already created before, I can come here and I can deploy a network using Twinlight and I can connect for these different options. In my case, I will use the Google to connect it, but you can have anything that you want. Once that I connect, they will give my work email what you're going to put my work email. My case will be exactly the same email that I'm connecting. The company name, Cyberlab. Quantum of employees that I want to put. So I'll we'll put connect and put singing. Now they will ask what kind of configuration that I want. So in my case, I'm not from protection. I'm using for personal hobby. If you are a company and you want to protect it, I suggest you look for other options and put next. Now what we're going to do, we're going to tell if we know how to set up it. In our case, I will show how to set up. So please put able to run, click run commands. If you are in the company and someone else, IT department needs to do it, you can come here. If you don't have anyone qualified, what is really difficult, you select this option but don't worry in this video we're gonna show how you can do so you can come here in a i know how to do it without any stress and go next now we can select the network that you want in my case will be the not network name cyberlab and the network cyberlab what it means that if i tape cyberlab dot twingate they will directly for my cyberlab so let's connect it once that my twingate is connect and create my cyber lab or my subdomain for the twin gate that's specific for me, I will need it to do some information. So what I can do, I can have my team, I can have my device and continue on. First of all, we need to create my network, how it's work. Once that you create your initial network, then we can create a remote network. But before we start to do it, let's try to understand what this application try to do, what they want to do for you. If I come here in my Excel, here based on your house, imagine that hits your house, everything have the router. So your NAS will connect to your router, your clients, this one could be your phone, could be your computer, laptop, tablet, and every all device that you have, these clients will connect to your router to be able to access your 
NAS. So how it work? Client, router, NAS, NAS, client, and this will be the connect. And that your router will allow some external access or some internet access. But if any of all these external users try to access this router, they will not permit because you don't have any door open unless you set up warning guard, open VPN, that one of those doors will open. Suppose that I open 1156, 54, that will be the access for your external user. But in our case, we don't have anything because it's a closed network. So before we start to think about it, let's create our network. So we'll come here and put add network. As I told, this, oh, this application can have different kind of networks. You can have AWS and in this AWS, you can have a virtual machine running there or instance in this system where instead of you have a Raspberry Pi, you're going to have this AWS that will process it. So they will collect the data, will process it and allow you to access different IP address or different uh, users. It's really interesting if you have uh, a cloud system or have more than one computer and don't want to have a physical controller controlling everything. So this option you can do in the AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. But in our case, because we're going to run in a Raspberry Pi, we can select as our own primacy and you can define the name. In our case, the name will be Sauber and I put add a network. What basically they did, they just create a network for me and this network will be look like private network hide in my system or it's uh, on primacy. But at the moment, I don't have anything connected for it. If you look here, I have uh, connectors. I have two connectors, I can add three, four, five, six connectors. What means these connectors? Imagine that I have one Raspberry Pi that will connect to this Raspberry Pi and I have another Raspberry Pi connect. This first Raspberry Pi stop to work, I will still have the second application. So it's really good for redundancy. If one system break, the other system will keep it working. Principally, if you, your work, it's important to have access and if you drop it, you can have a problems. In this case, you can have more than one connector or more than one IP address or more than one system connect everything together to avoid that it's stopped to work. So first thing, let's select one of those. Those are always aleatory numbers or names. So we'll put invisible because things that is a little bit different. And here we'll give different methods of connection, different methods of configuration. If you're using Docker, will be the Docker, what I strongly suggest you to do. If you want to go directly in the Linux, you select the Linux. If you're using some instance or some other virtual machines, you select those that you want. But in my case, I will put Docker. Now, what we need to do? We need to go to the second step. The second step will be generate the tokens. What is these tokens? We have a, a access token and refresh tokens. This one will be basically the key that will guarantee that your connection is secure. If those tokens don't match with the user and the start user, it means that something's wrong. So let's create these, those keys. Once that you try to create, they will ask you to authenticate again. Once you guarantee that this is really you, it's not someone else that is trying to generate those keys only to have access for your network. So let's authenticate. Once that you finish authenticate, they will create those keys. Don't need to copy because those keys will be safe here. But if you want to copy, perhaps, yes, you can copy here. What now we have? Custom dockers, don't need to worry about it. And here will be our docker run or our docker step. So now we can get our Raspberry Pi connected to internet and connect to the power and connect the PuTTY for be able to access it. So let's try to do it now. So once that I open PuTTY, I will do my login, Sauber, my password. Because user Raspberry Pi is revision three, it will take a little bit longer, but once that is connect, we can go for the next step. So I have my Raspberry Pi, it's quite warm, 47, but today it's quite warm, so it's okay. And that's the uh, first thing we need to update our system. How we can do it? We can do apt get update, after we update the system, we need to install the Docker in order to make it run. So if you don't know or you're not sure if the Docker is installed in your system, it's simple. You can just try to install it again. As you try to install it again, you can come here and put sudo apt install docker yo, yes, and put enter. What we need to do, we come back here and we copy this command. 
This one, the red give the token and refresh token, the host name and all the information. You don't need to modify anything, only copy, come here, open, put sudo and run it. Because I'm not run as a root, you need to put sudo and put enter. What they're gonna do? They will start to pull all the information, will start to, to guarantee that everything is there. And once that appear, this information, it means that it has been installed. But how I know that it's really working? I can come here and I can minimize and they already change the page. What it means? It means that the control is connected and it's relay is connected. Controller connect, it means that my device is connected. My relay is connected, it means that my con the access for the internet is available. So how it work? They will have the controller connect for a tunnel to the internet. And once that my user try to connect, they will connect to this specific relay. Here will be my private IP address and here my external IP address with the rest of configuration. I'm happy with it. Yes, I'm happy, but I didn't configure any policy or didn't configure anything for the users to have access. So now if I come here in Sauber, I have my connector. I can have more connectors according for my needs and I'll put add resource. What means this resource? We'll add like my port forwarding or what specific port that I want to access it. I can have for DNS or I can have for SID. In my case, I will use SID because I want to use IP address. The idea for this connection, I wanted to have access external for my Synology NAS. So I come here and put NAS. It means that here my Synology NAS will have access. Here will be my IP address. I'll put my IP address. If I want a range of IPs, I can come here slash 24 and that's uh, between 1 until 254 will have access it. I don't want it because I want to have a specific IP address to have access it. Now we can allow some block policy. What it means? It means that if I want to access any port from this specific IP address, yes, I'm allowed to do it because everything is allowed. But if I want to access specifically the port from the 151 for my Synology NAS, I can restrict it. So I can restrict and put port 500, I can block and block. It means that if I try to pin my system, it will not work. Only thing that it will allow the traffic will be from the TCP port 5000. So I can put add resource and they will ask what group or what user that I want. If I have only one user, it will be here. If I have a different groups, it will be all the groups here. So now I can put add a group. What it means? It means that my resource has been created. I can create as many resources that I want. And if I open my resource, here will be my activity. Because I don't have any user connect, they will not appear in activity. I can manage different access, giving access for some groups. So I can create the group users, editors and everything. And here will be the group that I want. If I come here, I can edit and modify it the according for my needs. And then I can enable, disable. But then you're going to ask, Alan, okay, no problem. How we know that it's working, how we can access it. So if I come here and access my IP address, port 5000 will have access for my NAS. But I'm happy with it. Yes, because I'm exactly the same network. So of course they will work. But let's do something different. So now to check this one, I just disable my network and leave my Wi-Fi. And this Wi-Fi, it's connected to the guest, so they are insulated for my system. I'm still able to access Google without any problem, but if I try to open the same application, it will be processing, 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 and nothing. If I try to open the same IP address, they not work because they are not connected, the same network. In other words, they insulate in their own network. So, if I try to put port 5000, same thing, they will not be able because I cannot reach it, it's insulate. So once that I prove what I need should I can do, I can connect to this application. Once that it's, I can come here and I can download the user. So I can download for Windows and I can basically install it. Because I already download, I come here and I can install this application. So I put next, it will say, you want to install, I say yes. It will take some minutes until they finish to install. Once that they install, we can add our VPN for this application. So let's wait a little bit. Now, how it work? You can have a remote access. I put continue and I will put my subdomain for 
my twin gate. So I'll put Sauber Lab and put Join Network. Once that you put in Join Network, they will ask you to connect. If you are not add as user, you're not going to have access it. But in my case, I have users, so I'll use my same account. And now they say it's connected. If I open here, they'll say that it's connected to the network NAS. What it means now, if I come here and refresh this page, I'll have access. If I try to open any other port for this, basically they will not work because they will not reach it. Only port that is allowed is this specific port, the rest of the ports not allowed. So if I come here, I can edit it and I can allow all the ports and put confirm. So now in this way, if I come here and put port 9000 and remove all this information, I'll be able to access my portainer. If I try to put any other port, it will be accessed. So in this way, I can manage only restrict the ports that I want. If I want to allow SSH, I can modify it. And always, if I connect, I come here in device, there will appear the device that's connected to my network, what user that's connected. If I come here policy, I can create different policies, authentication policies and everything, so I can guarantee that my user will be authenticated before they can connect it. If I come back here, here it's my network and here it's all the configuration. I can create different things, so if I want to add new users, once that they connect, there will be access for it. In the users, I can create different groups for the users. I can create different services specific for it. So in this way, I can create few networks, I can create few restrictions, and I can configure it the way that I need. So in this way, we're arriving at the end of this video. I hope that you guys like, and I hope that you can use it for your application. Please explain the people that don't want to allow the access for a full your network, because if you use a VPN, you're gonna allow full access for network. Other thing that's interesting for this one is that uh, they will direct the traffic only specific for the application. So in other words, if I'm accessing Google, if I look YouTube, if I do everything, they will do for your normal network. But if I want to access that specific IP address or that specific system, they will directly from this VPN. So in this way, you don't need to have a really strong system to control the traffic. They will only control the direct access for the application that you want. So this one make your life easy and also guarantee that uh, the speed for look YouTube will not be affected. And if a lot of users try to access it and try to access others applications at the same time, do not funnel all the traffic in the same place. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time.